Okay, so in today's video, I'd like to show you uh, basically a velocity standstill of a servo uh, and have you understand two different ways to go about using that if you wanted to uh, basically stop a servo. Not stop a servo, but monitor if a servo is not uh, running and, and you, ha you know, you're able to use that bit to transition to a different state or even a safety system. Um, now this would obviously work in conjunction with several different elements of a safety system, but uh, this, the purpose of this is just, just to show you a servo standstill bit and how to change the attribute of that servo standstill bit to uh, basically widen or shorten that window so you get a tighter tolerance. So real quick, <clears throat> kind of go over what we're, we're, we're working with is this is the same program we had before with the uh, UDTs that we made for the uh, motion controls. We are using the Emulate 5000 chassis. Now I'm using version 20. And uh, uh, of course, everything's set up for a servo, proper servo timing. Um, so we're using the time, uh, enable time synchronization. Uh, so I, I basically wrote this the, uh, uh, the other day in another, another video, and I'll, I'll have that show notes below to kind of, if you want to go back over that yourself, um, but real quick, we'll go ahead and run this uh, just to kind of get you uh, to the point where, you know, the, the system's running and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I try to, you know, to save some time on your end and, and uh, you know, get straight to the point. Uh, we kind of want to go about this as quick as possible. Uh, but again, if you want to go back through it, you can, um, you know. I mean, I have, I'll have the other videos in the show notes below. So um, now this this is transpiring. So okay. So now we're at a point where we are running the servo. The servo is actually the virtual axis are running. What we can do is a couple of things. Now we are using a virtual axis in this system. So let me show you an instance of using the uh, the actual average velocity to, to uh, index a stop. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll basically uh, we'll come down here and we'll add it like in, in this uh, area. And we'll use it to transition out of our um, out of our state machine to basically say that the machine is stopped. So we'll go get a compare. And we'll say less than, and then again we'll throw another less than in there, and we'll we'll put our virtual axis, uh, we'll pull up our virtual axis tag, uh, virtual axis one, and what we want to look for is average velocity. And then you want to copy that over here and change that to the second servo, being that these are running together because we geared them together up uh, up here and you see they're running together right now they're currently running uh, we can come in here and say well we want it say below one velo average velocity which is very very low I will say most systems are set up uh, about 10 I think uh, I think Rockwell set about 10 I'll add it to the box default um, but that's on at least on on the kinetic 6000 and uh like version 20 and below so but we'll, let's just say five for instance we'll put five for both of these and we'll say we'll just index a bit so oh, i'm sorry let's delete that and let's let's come down here and let's put uh axes at rest Okay, so when the axes, when the, when the average velocity of both axes are stopped, are not, are actually below five, then they will index an axis uh, at rest state. Or uh, that bit will come high. Then we'll use that bit down here to say that the machine is stopped, and we'll transition states. We'll transition to uh, a zero through there. So at this point, what we want to do is 
see we're in 7 and what we want to do is we want to change the speed real quick so let's change the speed so now we're running at a velocity uh, it didn't change let's see why didn't it change Okay. I think that should have been a seven. So, um, anyway, so uh, back to this. And we can actually put this, let's see, let's fix this real quick while we're here. That way, if we change speeds, it, it will work um, no matter what. Okay, so um, to look at that, we're running a velocity of 99 on both uh, virtual axes. And it indicates that right here. So if I change speeds, you can easily see that it transitions speeds, right? We run 25, it does that. Now, let's index a stop. So we index the stop, both velocities, uh, average velocity of each servo went down. It said that both axes are at rest. That's the bit we made. Then we transition to a state zero. So that's one way to go about this. Uh, the second way to go about it is we have actual, uh, we have two servos we put in that we don't have, or we don't currently have hardware for, but uh, we do have the servos in there. So we can use those tags and basically uh, monitor those tags. So I'd like to show you how to do that as well. So what we can do is we can come down here and add those tags in there. So instead of doing a velocity average, what we can do, and those uh, two servos are axis one, and I believe it's velocity standstill is what we're looking for. So scroll down to the tags and look for the velocity standstill status. We'll drag that over and then we'll use, being that we have two servos again, so these are actual hardware servos, uh, not virtuals. Um, the virtual axis does not have a standstill status and the reason being is because it has no hardware. So it doesn't have a, a, a reference back. So there's no encoder to tell it uh, what it's doing. Um, in that this instance, though, um, we are using uh, two actual motors in this system. They're just not hooked up in, in the system right now. This is the the bit you would use to determine if those were stand were actually um, stood still or are not running. They had no velocity. Now. If we were using all servo, all four servos in, in the instance where, that we have right here, we would use these two just like this, and then we would use the two hardware servos just like this. Now, for instance, if you wanted to widen that gap, let's just say you, for some reason you wanted to open up the um, standstill window of axis one and axis two. So what we would do is we would do a G, uh, I'm sorry, an SSV and then we would come down in the class we would put an axis so that's telling it that you want to change one of the the attributes are, are one of the configurations of one of the axes in the instance we want to show the instance that we're running or that we want to change so that this will be axis one in the attribute name uh, we'll come down in configuration and we'll go to velocity standstill window. In the velocity standstill window, you cannot just put 10 or something like that in there. This, So the instruction actually wants you to put in a name. So if we can put standstill, standstill. Uh, let's put tolerance, right? 
that's basically what it is right so it's not asking you just for a tag it's actually wanting you to put in a real so it's, it's wanting the value to be a float so you see how that basically uh, transitioned at this point you can change it to whatever you want to or if in and there's another instance too you can make this a, a, a constant where you can't change that here you have to actually go in the tag database and change it so that kind of keeps it a little bit more honest as well too but back to what I was saying if you wanted to change the servo standstill the standstill of like I think naturally they come at 10 um, I, you, you probably can look up a tech note to see if they do um, every instance that I've, I've ever seen it stops it uh, on a kinetic 6000 system using version 1920 or, or thereof um, even below that it does stop around 10 as far as the stands the standstill bit comes on around 10 um, if you wanted it a tighter tighter tolerance or, or even a looser tolerance say your servo system wasn't tuned as properly as you thought it was or you had something going on and you needed to change it um, the better bet if you need if you know a temporary scenario would be using something like this or even like doing something of this nature let's let me show you not, not to kind of branch off uh, what we're doing but and let's see we'll put axis 2 in there so if you were doing this temporarily right and that's not let's see let's go into axes let's go into just real quick I want to show you this okay so if we were actually doing this and you were doing it temporarily right but you still wanted to keep your standstill as soon as you get the problem fixed you want to keep your standstill in there you can put like a little test bit in here and say okay temporarily I want to widen the gap to 25 right I want to widen that gap to 25 um, for whatever reason you may want to I'm not saying do that um, I'm saying you have the option to do that um, as long as you use that average velocity um, I will say that the the best thing to do is to keep really tight tolerances um, and set SSVs if you do need to change it. And be careful when you're doing an SSV online. Uh, just make sure you know how to, you know, you do know exactly what um, what you're putting in. You can actually fault the processor if you, you know you put it in wrong. So what I like to do is copy paste, make things quicker. So I'll change this axis to this axis. And you see how quick and easy to change those both of those standstills were and most of the time you'll see something like this uh, where it's only going to index you know under initiation so you don't want to be like holding a, a SSV all the time so generally speaking you would only come in here and like end this index this on like a first scan or something and then that way it would only set your uh, your attributes to that servo just on a first scan. So so somebody like come up here and and threw it in program mode and threw it back in uh, run mode or, or they were troubleshooting or something like that. But they had changed this for some reason or, or they had changed something else. You would want to reinitiate initiate the uh, the correct parameters into your servo controls. Not to get on too much of a tangent on that, um, I just kind of wanted to, to kind of go over highlight uh, different elements of it. So you see where we we can control the um, the system as far as using a average velocity and using a less than command, or say for instance it could be a, a limiter or, or whatever you wanted to do. The uh, best route to use is always going to be the velocity standstill status. Um, by ch some chance you you put in a, a velocity standstill and you, your system is maybe not tuned properly or maybe the demand is a little bit different your feed forwards too high or 
or you, you maybe you have something going on that, that just won't allow you to hit that tolerance that uh, Rockwell has by default. Or maybe you want a tighter tolerance. Um, then you come down here and you can set an SSB. Just make sure you put in the proper class, which is an axis. You do the, uh, the instance, so the servo that you want to change, right? In our case, that was the axis 1 and axis 2. Um, we changed the attribute, uh, so we want the attribute name. We, we checked, uh, if you want to go back through that, basically we went to uh, standstill window, uh, it, which is under configuration, right? And then we made a tag. Uh, now in the source that it's going to be loading into that attribute, we came and it it will tell you if you load up that instruction, if you read deep enough in that instruction, that it needs to be a data type of a real. So uh, whatever you name this, uh, you could name it, um, you know, whatever the case may be. I, uh, I just put um, a, a generic name up here, standstill tolerance. Um, just keep in mind that it has to be a real, and you can use it multiple times. So, but the uh, also the virtual axis do not have standstill windows so generally speaking you will not be monitoring anything like this um, because of the fact of when you tell a virtual axis to stop it's going to stop and your your system is probably following a virtual axis and not having a virtual axis follow something else so for instance uh, we're using an emulator software so just to kind of highlight um, a servo running I used I chose to use a uh, a virtual axis which does not happen to have a standstill status uh, bit but I did want to add the controller or add these uh, servos the hardware in there to show you that to show you the use of a standstill bit and uh, you know if you need to how to how to use it around it just as a just for merely troubleshooting I'm not saying this is the way to program it I'm saying properly programmed it should probably look something like this that's right so you would have your set your actual servo standstills and if you needed to you'd have this in a separate routine that only scanned on a first scan so that only this didn't run high all the time or didn't run all the time so real quick I just want to go over that um, you know how to basically uh, the difference between a servo monitoring a when you're monitoring a servo uh, stop position or a stopped motion uh, what you should use you either use the average velocity or you can use the servo standstill bit which is recommended the servo standstill bit is is probably the uh, the best thing to use but uh, in a pinch you could use the average velocity Okay, so again, um, uh, appreciate your time. Uh, I know this kind of ran a little bit long, 18 minutes, um, but I just kind of wanted to go over those points. And uh, if you have any questions, have any comments, have any suggestions that for, uh, for different videos or maybe some more in-depth servo stuff, then uh, please comment below, drop me a line, let me know, and uh, I'll be glad to put something together. And uh, again, thank you for your time, and uh, look forward to, to hearing your comments.